Howdy everybody, getting things going here. Got a little screen share we're gonna do first. I had to unmute my mic for you, I believe. And howdy to everybody tuning in. Hang with me. That is some high class production brought to you by Jason over at the Mash and Drum. We are back. Uh, this is our second uh, monthly meeting of another round. I'll let everybody introduce themselves. I'll go left to right on my screen. Let me minimize a little bit here so I can see my chat. That's going. Uh, Kyle, come on in, introduce yourself. What's up, guys? Uh, Kyle here from Bourbon Blind. Um, obviously, we test everything blind. You can find us on all the social media pages, Bourbon Blind, um, except for we do have a new Facebook page for everyone called Bourbon Blind Nation. So check it out. Nice. And uh, joining us tonight, an alternative, Bobby Childs, Adventures in Whiskey, could not join us. We reached out. We said, who do we want to come in as an alternate? And uh, Dan and Sean from the Bourbon Junkies, on short notice could come in. You guys introduce yourselves and tell people where to find you. Go ahead, dude. Do it. Uh, we're Burn Junkies. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Patreon. Do that. Um, but I'm Sean. He's Dan. Yep. Uh, we've been doing this for a little bit now. And a uh, little whiskey. A little whiskey, too. A little, little nonsense. Yeah, mostly nonsense. Mostly nonsense. I'm going to yeah. be honest. I might not take it as seriously as a lot of other people. No. That's all right. But it's we have fun. a lot of fun. It's still a good that's, time. That's, that's, that's what we enjoy about this. Sure. Good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, hundred percent. Thank you for having us. And uh, Bart and I partake in a little bit of shenanigans as well. <laughs> you definitely yeah. do, and it's great. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys probably saw us, and you said, "God, look at those guys! If those two can do it, we can do it as well." <laughs> and up next, Jason over at the Mash and Drum. Come on in. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Nice to see you, uh, Jason at the Mash and Drum on YouTube. Uh, Mash and Drum on Instagram, uh, on Twitter also at the Mash and Drum or the Mash and D, I think for short. Uh, do about two reviews a week. Right now I'm in the middle of doing my March Madness shootout, uh, my $20 to $30 bracket championship. Hope you guys are enjoying it and excited to be here tonight, guys. Up next, John Boyer. Go ahead, John. What's going on, everybody? I'm John from Blind Whiskey Reviews. And yes, Jason, we are enjoying your March Madness business here, doing a great job. But yeah, Blind Whiskey Reviews, doing all, all blind reviews, the original blind review channel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can catch me on Instagram and Twitter at blind underscore reviews. So yeah, go check that out. And Scott, my bourbon journey. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, glad to be back. Uh, yeah, you can uh, find me obviously on uh, YouTube, uh, My Bourbon Journey. Uh, also, same thing with uh, Instagram, uh, also uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter as well. Uh, yeah, and I try to post uh, videos generally on Wednesdays and now Saturdays. Uh, so yeah, go, hopefully you'll uh, check it out, subscribe, and uh, yeah, thanks. All right, what's uh, left or right? Kyle, what you drinking? I am uh, actually having some Henry McKenna. Mm. Um, so got out some Isaac Bowman and some couple other things, but uh, um, yeah, starting off with a little bit of Heaven Hill. We have uh, our review tomorrow. We've got a few, uh, three budget bourbons over 50% or 100 pr proof. And we had just picked up this early times bottled in bond. It's a one liter bottle. Uh, should be $25 range. Very good. Junkies, what do you guys got? So I got a, uh, I'm starting off with a little, uh, we did a little live stream before this. So we had a few, yeah. few beverages before this, but for this one, I picked God's gift to whiskey, as I like to call it. It's Old Forster 1920. 
<laughs> unallocated, 60 bucks. I don't know what gets better. You know what I mean? Um, I uh, reached into Dan's staff uh, of a, a few bottles of Henry McKenna, and I decided uh, just, just to go with the one that was open. But, uh, yeah, we've had a couple things tonight, and uh, I'll probably venture through a couple of Heaven Hill products. So did Dan fore foresee this coming? Did he already have those bottles on hand, or did he rush out yesterday and buy them? I'm a whiskey genie, so I think I've had these bottles for, like, um, I always had, like, two McKenna's on hand. Yeah. Um, but then when – actually, I only bought these because of the price spike, not because of, like, any of the wards or anything. So when they said that the price a while back was going to, like, 40 I went out and bought three of them and had one open already and still have the other three not open, so. What's the average price you paid for them then? I paid, um, I think I paid thirty four ninety nine for each one of them actually. So they only went up like five bucks. A couple stores around here have them for like forty five fifty before before the award thing. So, but when people hear prices are going up, they like the hoard thing. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, what do you got? Um, I did pour. I did pour some McKenna, but I'm starting off the night with a uh, beautiful Russell's Reserve single barrel uh, store pick. So called Godsmacked. It's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with a little Godsmack. Nothing yeah. wrong with a little Godsmack. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's what it's what McKenna's doing to the rest of the field in the bourbon world. Just Godsmacking them. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently. Yeah. That's what we hear. That's John, what we, what we hear. hear. What we hear. Uh, I decided to start a little soft, smooth, and simple, so we're going for a little bit of the, the Weller 12 oh, here. Geez. We did flex, but okay. <laughs> hey, man, it was, only, it was only 26 bucks. It's not. I'm not exactly flexing here. <laughs> was the guy still breathing that you stole it off of? <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> Who we got up next? Scott, what do you got? All right, so I'm going to be uh, really original here. So I don't know if you guys have heard of this new release, Henry McKenna. Uh, I heard it's good. Yeah, it's not so good. So it's not like it's going <laughs> to win any awards or anything. So don't worry about that. So um, <laughs> that and then also a little bit of the uh, Sagamore Spirit, the port finish I'll have uh, as well. I think it won uh, in, in the rye category as Whiskey of the Year. So. Oh, it is. Yeah. Did uh, did everybody have the McKenna then? Kyle, did you have the McKenna on hand? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had yeah. some on hand. Thank you for that. Well, let's just start off. That was one of the topics we had talked about or came up just in the last couple of days because they were announced for the second year in the row of winning the San Francisco whiskey um, competition. So we, Bart and I reviewed that a couple. I went and found it was, I think, August of 2016. We reviewed it. I think it was $25, $27 in our area at the time. Uh, we found it a good 10-year bourbon worth the $27. And that was about it. I think that it's really, really, really good. For $27, I think it's really good. Now, for $50 bucks or $60 bucks or whatever it's going to go to now, I, don't, I think it's uh, mediocre at best, honestly. So I think that puts it in a different price range. And uh, I think... They, you know, I know they do these like blind. Um, somebody had posted something earlier about how they have the proof. They have the uh, if there's barrel statistics or bar barrel facts on the mm -hmm. bottle, they have those, and they have the age. Um, I really, I sat down earlier and tried for a good ten minutes to come up with another ten year, hundred proof, uh, single barrel whiskey off the top of my head that they would be tasting in that competition, and it was really hard. So I, I really think that those three statistics actually allowed them to realistically. Exactly. Yeah, narrow it down pretty darn, pretty darn close. I would so. definitely agree with that 100%. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, wow, that's not really blind at all. I mean, yeah. when we were down in New Orleans judging, I mean, they told us what category we were judging, and that was it. No proof, no age, no nothing, you know? So, And I think that's fair. How, how, how you're, from the sounds of it, your experience is what I would imagine they had done theirs like when they said theirs was blind. You know what I mean? Right. So, it's an interesting way to do it, I guess, but yeah, I was, I was curious when I found out if the, um, you know, is heaven Hill. I heard a couple different, you know, theories on this is heaven Hill picking the best bottle that came out of the best barrel possible and sending it their way. Or are they, are these guys going to the store and just picking up bottles off shelves to be in it? Because if I'm heaven Hill, I want the best, absolutely best single barrel McKenna I have to be in the competition. 
we had just talked about that actually. Um, we did a little live stream before and someone was talking about Henry Kenna and we said, Hey, we're jumping over to uh, this live stream and we're actually going to be talking about it. And I said, I feel like this is really forced. Like they're winning two years in a row now. And I was like, do they have just one honey barrel that is amazing that they just keep sending out? Um, <laughs> It feels I, cheap. I would. They yeah. Yeah. When, they, when they do these competitions, they ask um, they ask the distilleries to go ahead and send over like two or three bottles of of their stuff so they can taste it. Um, so I mean, they're they're not just going and picking it up off the shelf. And I mean, in all fairness, if I was Heaven Hill, would I put you know would I send out a honey barrel? Hell yeah, I would. Hell you know, yeah. Allegedly like, though, allegedly last out. year they said that they went to the store and bought it. Allegedly. Yep. Yep. I don't know how yep. true I think that is, but that's what they said. Yeah, see, John, I heard that too, which is what made me wonder. There was a couple different things going around that oh, these guys are just going to stores and picking out, you know, the bottles. But if I'm gonna be in a competition, uh, and I'm using air quotes here, as prestigious as San Francisco <laughs> Spirit <laughs> Awards, um, you know, then I would probably, yeah, I'm sending, I'm sending my best barrel, my best, my best honey barrel, my best bottle. Um, and it was an interesting point, uh, Bourbon Junkies, you brought up, Get you know, what's the closest thing to a 10 year single barrel thing that you can do? And I thought the thing, the, the closest one I could think of was the Michter's 10. And mm -hmm. that's not even a hundred proof that's close, but that's also 120 bucks, you know, retail. So yeah. Yeah. And, and good luck finding it for that. Exactly. Yeah, and, exactly. you know, yeah. That's in the other, and the other issue is that with McKenna, I mean, it's so Oak forward that it, it, it becomes so like distinctive. I mean, it's not even like I would say a normal, you know, hundred proof bottle and bond tenure. I mean, it's really fairly Oak forward. I mean, it's something that really stands out. And I think as blind as they say, I think so many of these guys start to taste these things and they really can fall back on what what they were before and i think a lot of that is is kind of continuing to happen so i mean i can tell you too my problem with mckenna of late and i, I mentioned this to you guys behind the scenes but and i'll give everybody watching a little bit of insight i just did a blind review of henry mckenna yesterday it just happened to come up and so i had oh, more we're supposed, to, we're supposed to believe that too i swear it just <laughs> yeah. came he up had it waiting. So i have multiple barrels this is barrel four zero eight nine which is the one i reviewed yesterday and i bought this bottle at a store that's probably like 50 miles from my house i bought this bottle which is the last one i reviewed which is barrel 4073 and i instantly knew that this other bottle was this one because this one tasted pretty bad and this one tasted even worse and they had the same character that was bad now the one thing i might give henry mckenna is that these were both barreled on the exact same day december 10th 2007 so maybe they had a bad whiskey making day, but it just kind of goes to show that Henry McKenna being a single barrel product has a lot of variants bottle to bottle. And that was, that's always been true for me. I mean, Henry McKenna has always been a different experience, but it's always been a good experience up until these last couple of bottles. So I'm not sure if their quality control has kind of gone out the window a little bit, but I've definitely been getting a lot of, a couple of bad bottles lately. Have, so. have they said which barrel it was that was sampled? So Fred Minnick posted a picture. That. I'm sorry, Fred Minnick posted a picture, but I don't. He he didn't claim that that was necessarily the bottle that it was. Yeah, the but one he, the one he posted was barrel four nine seven six, barreled on four seven zero oh, eight. I have a I have a pretty close uh pretty close bottle. Mine I have a bottle here that was barreled on uh, four eighteen oh eight. Pretty close. Yeah, mine's uh, August fourth of oh eight, so not that long ago. Yeah, mine's, I just thought uh, it's strange that my bottle both has a strange with, medicinal character. December 27th, 07. Um, but I will say I'm with John on this one. Like Henry McKenna for me in the last, even the last few years has been really hit or miss. Like, you know, when you go get a Russell single barrel or a Four Roses single barrel or a Knob Creek single barrel, like they usually have, they're pretty close in that same wheelhouse. Like I've had some McKenna's, they might as well not have even been from the same distillery. They were so different. I mean, yeah, they were, I, I would agree. I would agree, uh, Kyle, because I remember when I first discovered McKenna and I was buying bottles like crazy, it was probably more like seven out of 10 were really good. And then I feel like that ratio has kind of went down a little bit. Now it's, yeah. I feel like I'm getting more that are kind of stinkers than good. Maybe it's just damn, you know, bad luck. Who knows? But well, should know, they, I would say mine is too. Bad luck. Should they like, should they be allowed to have single barrels? I mean, just because of that reason. No, and so I don't they, think so. Yeah, they rate a single barrel that high, and no one else has it, 
Or I think they're there was only 350 the, bottles from it. Yeah, it'd be like bringing a store pick in for the for the competition. You know, you can't bring a whiskey that's hand selected. Like if it's not a, a sampling, that I mean, it's it's hard to even do a single barrel period just because no, how many people are going to be able to experience that same whiskey that you just tasted? Not very many, right? Yeah, that's but, that's exactly yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, like you're saying with a single barrel, maybe with some of these, I mean, ten years old, you're probably not even getting two hundred, you know, bottles. So I mean, it does. It becomes a very difficult type of thing to have classified as whiskey of the year when you or you know possibly a couple hundred people even have an opportunity to get what they may classify on that bottle as that i mean who knows you know what it is they may have a honey barrel that they're dumping in something else i mean who knows what they're doing but yeah that's a that's a very difficult thing to have a single barrel winning you know whiskey of the year when it's there's so few of them yeah and i'm uh, jason coates in the yeah. chat actually brought up a good point right. he said that uh you know, maybe because of the demand for for this stuff, maybe as soon as that thing hits 10 years, they're just bottling it. Maybe they're not going in and being able to really identify when it's actually ready. They're just throwing it in bottles and getting it out there because of the demand. I don't know. Well, and here's, here's the other factor. With them being single barrels and depending on how many barrels of this stuff that they have, well, they, they potentially are going to come from different areas of the rickhouse, whether it's higher or lower. So you've got heat. And certain other things that are going to start to, you know, affect those single barrels, which, you know, we all know one barrel next to another could have a completely different profile. So now you're factoring in, you know, hotter areas, cooler areas. So they're, they're really, they, they can be all over the place. All right. So, so to, from that, I would say that, like, think of something like Eagle Rare. They don't consider it a single barrel because they don't purge their lines in between. But look at how like you can go anywhere and it's pretty much you're getting something that is a 10 year single barrel pretty much. And it's so like repeatable. That's something that like you can just go and I can get from three different areas. And it's usually always the same thing. We've never had a bad Eagle Rare. We've never had a bad Eagle Rare. The other thing, I think yeah. if you're going to leave a single barrel in a in a whiskey competition, I think that the single barrels get completely removed immediately from winning overall period. I think you keep yeah. it in. And I think it's fun to have it in because now, realistically for me, for for us, yeah. now he goes, okay, so bottle 4895 won best single barrel of the year, right? So now if we really care and we want and we agree with his palate, we can go look for 4895, right? That's fun. That that creates like a new little adventure. Maybe you can find it. Maybe you can't. But n there, there should be no way in which 4895 now, that one single bottle like you were just saying, gets to win the whole thing. That's That, yeah. that seems absolutely ridiculous. I would, yeah. I would almost – I would almost guarantee you, though, barrel 4895 went to one distributor and was probably distributed to one region yeah. of one state. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I exactly. can pretty agree. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, the thing is, in, in now secondary market, some people don't like it. Some people like it. Some people use it. Some people don't. What it'll do, I guess, realistically, all it's going to do is that one bottle or that, that one batch of 200 bottles is now $200 on secondary instead of 50 that's what I guess realistically that's what it'll do. So um, I want to say real quick, uh, ADHD fishing in the um, chat was saying that he's um, one of the ones that posted the the quote from Fred Minnick on um, Instagram, um, dad, the bourbon man. And uh, the San Francisco whiskey society came in and said, well, you know um, we really need to give them the age and the proof in this so that they can judge it accurately. And John, I mean, I'm sure you'll back me up on this. Like that should have absolutely no bearing on how you rate a whiskey. No, you know none I mean? whatsoever. Like, I mean, we, we both do the same thing, which is blind reviews. And the reason you do blinds, because all we're telling you is whether this, what this whiskey tastes like. And if we think it's good, it doesn't matter how old it is, what proof it is. None of that really, really matters other than how you perceive it. Like if I perceive a hundred proof whiskey that tastes like 120, it's probably not that great a whiskey, you know, right, but I mean, like, the color like know. that. There's like factors the like color, that that matter, know, like, but yeah, at the end of the day, is that whiskey good or not? The proof, the age, none of that matters. I know, like, okay, so if you tell me this is a 10-year-old whiskey and I say, oh, well, you know, it's got good color for a 10-year-old whiskey, mm -hmm. like, does is that really qualifying it compared to something that is 8 or 15 years old that actually has a better color or – um you know what I mean? Like that, it should have absolutely no bearing on yeah, yeah, what, you're you're tasting have, what you think about it. You have to factor in, even when you do blind, you know, I do a lot of blind tastings on my channel too. And, mm -hmm. and you have, you have situations where 
everyone says it. You know, you, you, you can look across a lot of the videos, you know, especially you, John, especially Kyle. You know, you're doing bourbon blind tastings all the time. Uh, Scott and Bart, you two guys on your on your quick hitters every now and then. When you do a blind tasting, you get whiskeys that until the end, you're not you you can't tell if it's that hot or not. Some whiskeys drink lighter than they actually are. Some drink hotter than they actually are, and I think that should factor into your judging. They shouldn't know the proof because that already sets it in your mind of okay, well, I know this is a hundred proof, so. My, my brain is already going to factor that in that, okay, this is a good 100-proof whiskey. But what if it's actually a crap 100-proof whiskey that's drinking hotter or lower than it's supposed to? That should all be factored in. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. They should, be, they, they should be tasting these things, you know, blind, not given anything except a glass with whiskey in it. And you tell us how good this stuff is based on you not knowing anything. That's truly how... You know, if you're going to judge the best of anything, especially whiskey, you need to know basically nothing about what that is. And you break it down and figure <laughs> out, is that your best, you know, whiskey? And I, I do. I think when they start, you know, getting too much information that now they're starting to bank things. They, they, they're picking and choosing like what these certain things, you know, what categories they fall into. And I, I do. I think that becomes a little bit too much of a like a mind game for them that they need to just go into this thing completely blind, not knowing anything. You judge it and tell me, is this the best whiskey in the world? Period. I agree hundred percent because it goes back to what Dan said that how many 10 year old uh, single barrels at a hundred proof can you really name? Big um, one. That's yeah. actually going to make it in the competition. I don't, I don't, I literally, I probably for real sat there for 10 minutes and I'm like, okay, uh, maybe an EH Taylor product. And then I sat there and I'm like, no, it's not it's 10, not 10 years old. Not it's not 10 years. Yeah. The Mictor's 10, like Mash and Drum was saying, it's okay, not, 100. not 100 proof. Eagle Rare, not 100 proof. Not a single barrel. We're getting, yeah, te yeah technically. It wouldn't be on the sheet, I guess, yeah. actually. Yeah. I, I think the other interesting part to it is, I realistically, um, I, the, I think the panel was like 30 people. And it blows my mind that this is a whiskey thing. So last year in 2018, it actually ended up winning best bourbon, best bourbon overall. You know, no, no, I know, but this, is, but this is a whiskey thing. Yeah. So they won best bourbon overall last year. This year they won best whiskey overall. So you're going to tell me that $40 and now they don't know the price, but they narrowed it down. I'm sure they could figure it out there. You're going to tell me that this $40 Henry McKenna single barrel was better than every scotch this year. It was better than every Irish, every Canadian, every whiz. It was better than every Irish and Canadian. Let's be real, but right. it was better. <laughs> It's better than every scotch. It's better than every bourbon. I like. You're gonna. I can't imagine having 2018 E.H. Taylor four grain, and having this and picking that. We really I can't. Really got sent to think, uh, that's a really, really fantastic person, and there is no way that I would say that that's gonna be a better whiskey of, of McKenna is gonna be a better whiskey than that. Like it's just not even feasible. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, I, and and I agree. I agree with that. I mean, I I think you know if if they took you know whatever the five or six of us and and McKenna was in there amongst a few of the other things that we picked out, I'd be very confident in the fact that McKenna probably wouldn't be overall our choice. I, I just I just have a hard time be very believing that that they're unless not it's a cherry picked honey choice. barrel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess yeah, I mean, I guess that's the the other issue. But here the flip side would be. That if that's if that's what they're doing and they're going to allow it or or whatever you want to call it, then everybody else should be doing the same thing. I mean, I, I would I would be very surprised that if that's what they're doing, that everyone's not sending in what they think is their best whiskey. So well, I mean, th there are three of us here right now that were drinking McKenna. Does anyone feel that their McKenna bottle was worth you know anything more than uh, even say fifty dollars? Um, I mean, this one's really good. It's a really good whiskey, but I'm not going to be like, hey, I mean, we've got $100 stuff here that uh, beats the brakes off it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sipping on this. Uh, I'm sipping on this McKenna right now. I'll easily take Russell's Reserve single barrel or a Knob Creek single barrel over this, hands down. Yeah. I was just about to say that I just poured some Russell's in my glass after that McKenna, and I would take that over the McKenna any day. Any no day. Question. How about, okay, so here's a question. I'll just and I'll go left to right, just a yes or no answer. Could you see or do you think uh, there's any 
whiskey magazines that would uh, hand out awards based on advertising dollars from certain products. Kyle? No. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know that any of that... I don't know that any of that stuff happens, but at the same time, I don't know that it doesn't. And it wouldn't surprise me if it did. Um, like I said, when I judged down in New Orleans, it was completely blind. No, you know what I mean? We weren't told anything. Um, but like I said, the, way, the, the fact that they tell you about the bottle and all that kind of stuff like that just really sounds kind of a little fishy to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Junkies, what do you think? Does that ever happen? I, I, would, I mean, I'm going to guess Heaven Hill has a pretty shitty marketing budget. Like, <laughs> they probably wouldn't be able to afford anything like that. So, uh, no. Uh, no. I, I, I think magazines are really hard. Like, magazines are probably on their way out, right? Magazines are probably dying. I think if you can... In articles, though? I think you can uh, float, if you can float your business for another six months or whatever it may be, <laughs> for you to drink the right whiskey and say it's really good. Yeah. Probably. I could see it. Let's put it that way. I could see it happening. Yeah. They have, they have enough people that are commenting and sharing the story of their $30 bottle winning um, two years in a row now. That well, I don't know what you're spending for that. Um, it's going to be worth it. Jason, what do you think? Um, I absolutely <laughs> think that happens. Um, not sure if it's a heaven hill type thing, but. I mean, look, I, I, I take it back sometimes to even, what was it? Remember Jim Murray with his whiskey Bible that year, that Crown Royal one? <laughs> I mean, what the F? Uh, you know, you know the best whiskey in the world. So I, I, I don't want to say something was going on under the table, but I think Jim Murray got, you know, he had definitely some extra money in his sock that day somewhere. <laughs> 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 so I think I think stuff like that does happen, yeah. and I, I'm also I'm also <laughs> waiting to see, knowing Heaven Hill and their price increases lately, uh, them cutting, getting rid of the bottled and bond, and, and probably going to be bottling another more expensive whiskey down the line uh, that's older, probably going to be harder to get. I'm just waiting to see how soon it's going to be until they you know, have the price on the McKenna for everyone. John, what do you think? Can people buy awards? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we all know money rules the world. You know, if, if people have a budget that they can throw a little money at certain people, I'm sure that can that can have an impact. Not to mention, too, the bourbon community specifically is pretty small. I mean, a lot of these people know each other, the writers, the distillers. You know, they're, they're, it's not a very big community. So I bet you some of those relationships hold some sway in some of this stuff, too. So I, I think there's definitely likely to be some impropriety here and there. Scott, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think there's uh, really anytime there's some monetary gain involved, um, there's there's bound to, you know, have some of these shenanigans that are probably, you know, happening. I, I think ultimately, you know, money is what kind of rules just about, you know, everything. And once that becomes a factor in things um, and people are, are able to get a little extra something, um, I think that starts to sway, you know, several things. I mean, you'd like to think that it's not necessarily happening, but, um, you know, yeah, like, you know, Jason and John and mentioned, you know, anytime these, these big players, whether they're magazine guys or whatever it may be, um, that they can be influenced a little bit. And um, it, it seems like things are starting to kind of go that direction a little bit more with some of these, you know, top guys where a lot of the same names of companies start to pop up a little bit more. And it's, and if, if they want to take a few dollars and pad their pocket and ruin their reputation, it, it won't be, but one small mention of something and their career could be, you know, ruined. So if they want to do it, then, you know, that's up to them. But yes, in a, in a nutshell, yes, I do think that, that that's happening. All right. Well, we want to. I want to try to keep the. Okay. So this is the second edition of the of another round. The first uh, episode went for three hours. <laughs> We're not going to do that tonight. We're sticking at the hour mark. So let's move on to the next topic. Everybody ready? Let's, do it. let's talk about some alternatives. Now we've got Henry McKenna in your bottled in bond. Uh, people will be running out, snatching it up off of the shelves. It's going to be gone. 
uh, over recent years, we've seen the same thing happen in what we now call allocated bottles, you know, be it your Pappy Van Winkles, some of your E.H. Taylors, uh, Old Foresters, yep. uh, fill in the blank anyway. Let's talk about if people want to find an alternative, say they can't get their hands on one of those allocated bottles, what can they look for that might be a suitable replacement? Um, let's go with, what do you want to start? Give me a, a, a what bottle should we start with? What's an allocated Yeah, Elijah bottle? Craig Barrel Proof is kind of like the gold standard of whiskey and that's readily available in most places. So I'd say that's a good place to start. So a replacement for Elijah Craig Barrel Proof? Not a replacement for it. I think it's a good replacement it. for an allocated bottle that you can't get. I mean, oh. I, I travel a lot around the country and I don't think I can think of a city where I didn't find Elijah Craig Barrel Proof sitting on the shelf of a liquor store at a reasonable price somewhere. So it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely underrated, but let's say um, it could replace maybe the, the BTAC George Stag if you can't find it. I'm just saying, uh, do we want to talk about specific replacements, like a replacement for a particular whiskey? Sure. What okay. whiskey are we replacing then? Well, let's All just right. say that. Uh, let's, well, let's, let's talk about, let's find an allocated bottle. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the BTAC series. Okay. Yeah. Now, naturally for the, for the George Stagg, of course, you got your George Stagg Jr. Um, how about the Weller? If somebody's looking for a replacement for that uh, well or a, an, an alternative, they can't find the Weller BTAC. What would be a good whiskey, fairly close that they might be able to find? Mm, I don't know. For me, I think the Weller one's a little bit tough because finding a good barrel proof, yeah, weeded bourbon is tough. Like Makers has theirs, but I think Makers isn't very good. So yeah, that would I don't be, think it's a great alternative. That yeah, that's a tough one. You know, I will tell you, just getting back to and because there's a couple comments on the ECBP. I've actually gone like last year or the, well, last year's the 2018 version of the stag next to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof wins. So uh, to me, that's an alternative to the stag. Weller, like Weller would be a tough one. I think Weller might be the hardest one in the antique claim. I haven't had we haven't had uh, Saz eighteen. Weller seemingly is probably the hardest one because we it was so good, <laughs> and I, we, I don't know that we had anything this year that like we compared to it necessarily. Um, no, hundred percent. I don't think there's anything that we could stand next to. Oh, just in our experience, that I can put next to Weller and be like, that's pretty close. I, I, think, I think the closest thing you're going to get it really is the Weller Antique, which has become somewhat easier to find. But for most people, you still can't really find it. It's tough and it's usually, you know, priced upwards. Um, he, uh, Maker's Mark cast strength was mentioned, but that's not even near the flavor that you're going to get in a Weller. I would say the closest you can literally get is Poor Man's Pappy. Um, it's ish to Weller, but... That that one's going to be the hardest one to replicate. Um, well, let's talk how about Weller twelve now. Well, Van Winkle twelve has caused the burden, the disappearance of Weller twelve, mm -hmm. and now Weller Antique one hundred and seven, and in some areas the Weller Special Reserve. So people that wanted the Van Winkle 12 may have substituted Weller 12, but now it's disappeared. What other whiskeys do we look at there? If you were looking for something along those lines, John, what would you pick up? I mean, it's tough again because it's a weeded bourbon, so it's hard to replace the weeded stuff because it's just a little bit unique. And, the, and the, some of the other weeded options aren't that, just aren't the same. I mean, the, the weeded Buffalo Trace recipe is pretty unique. In terms of the flavor profile, you know, makers and things don't don't taste the same. Um, so, like you said, I mean, Weller Twelve is hard to come by. Antique is hard to come by. I mean, there's plenty of good weeded bourbons out there, like Larceny, but they're not the same. You know, it's a different whiskey altogether. The closest I can even think of is if you took Larceny and put it in a small oak barrel for a while to impart some of that, um, you know, that Weller oak funk to. It, I don't. There's nothing that gets to weather. Uh, what do you think about um 1792 sweet wheat? Mm. Yeah, for me, I've never had the sweet wheat, so I don't know. Maybe the sweet wheat might be like a, a decent 
um, maybe like special reserve replacement or something like that. I think there's there's a let's try let's try that. There's a pretty good Uh-oh. weeder. There's a pretty good weeder. I think we're leaving out that we're not talking about, but I don't know if it's supposed to be going away. And that's the Rebel Yell ten year. You shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, I was I was actually gonna say the um. Uh, for like for especially up against like Weller Special Reserve and stuff, the uh, the Rebel Yell Small Batch Reserve, yeah, like twenty or thirty bucks, and it's freaking phenomenal. It really yeah. is. Yeah, I think Rebel Yell makes some decent stuff. A couple of the bottles are really good. That Rebel Yell Single Barrel Ten Year. I hope it doesn't go away, but you know you you can get some. There are some really good bottles there that I would put up against a uh, you know a good a good Weller. You know. So we made another one, another one that's really difficult to get your hands on, though. I mean, I, at least around me, I never see the ten-year single barrel Rebel Yell product. And yeah. if you do find it, they want a hundred bucks for it or something crazy. So, oh, okay, I think that's a difficult one. We went. From, I've, never, I've never seen the Rebel Yell ten-year on the shelf here. No, but we yeah, went yeah, from we, like we what would be Weller. Area. Sorry, would be Weller twelve to maybe what's special reserve and, and that just really shows you how hard it is to get into that that line um the, buffalo trace has a a very uh a knocked out corner of weeded whiskey they i don't think there's a lot of things that really replicate what they have in that line yeah i would say that you know it's tough to match a whiskey that has the same flavor profile but i I wouldn't say that I couldn't find a whiskey that's readily available. That's nothing like Weller 12 that I wouldn't rather drink. Like there's plenty of whiskeys I'd rather grab than Weller 12. Well, that's 12. fair. We, we don't like Weller 12 that much. Yeah, I don't think Weller 12 is <laughs> amazing. I mean, it's deep for, for – if you can get it at, for sub 30 bucks, I'm happy yeah. to pay it. But much more than that, I'm out. And But there's like I said, there's plenty of other whiskeys I'd rather grab for similar price points. So, I mean, as a replacement, no, there's no direct, like, this tastes just like Weller 12. Yeah. But there is plenty of whiskey I'd rather grab than Weller 12. But the so. problem is you don't find it for 30 bucks. Um, that secondary market on Weller 12 is literally insane right now. So, uh, I, I just don't know what, what you would even put in there to be like, uh, that's close to it. I would rather reach to about any other weeded whiskey and be like, I will drink that for thirty dollars than pay any secondary price for Weller Twelve or something like that. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, the hype is there. I mean, there's a reason why that stuff was, you know, twenty, maybe thirty, maybe forty dollars max. I mean, that's what that stuff is, and mm-hmm. people have just bought into that hype of it's Weller and it's automatically good, okay. and you know, it, it, it's not bad. But again, it's it's twenty five, thirty, thirty five, forty dollar whiskey. It, it you know weeded whiskey. It it is what it is. So you know. Yeah, when we did the uh, the Weller twelve blind, um, you would give everything a price tag, and I think it was right around that like thirty five or forty dollar mark is the most we'd be willing to pay for it when we tested it blind. Okay. I mean, it's yep. just not. You know. No, I could think of um, Eric Waite in the chat said uh, if you can't get Pappy. What are you grabbing instead? I said literally yeah. anything else, but someone made a video about that. Hmm. Yeah, I think <laughs> that you got a bunch of subs from that video because of the title. I'm pretty there sure like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, honestly, I mean, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. But I mean, honestly, if and not just Pappy, but like a lot of the allocated stuff, my three main go sorry, my three main go tos are right there. Yeah. I mean. I could literally drink these three for the rest of my life and be perfectly happy. I really I, I think. I mean, I think if you're going to yeah. start replacing allocated bottles, and I think especially for value, you're going to have to start relying on store picks from stores Absolutely. that you find that you like their palates. A hundred percent. I think if you go to a store and some stores let you sample and do stuff like that. I think if you go and sample a store and you like a store pick and then you go back and you sample another store pick and you like that one too, but it was a different whiskey. What you're going to find is you like that person's palate and you like how they pick barrels, right? So I think if you follow that store along with their barrel picks, you're going to find things. I, I would take a Buffalo, a good Buffalo Trace store pick from a local store over any of the Weller line, sub Weller, uh, the WLW, um, the, the CYPB, the 12, the Antique. I the, We had a Buffalo Trace pick from that store that I would rather have and it was 30 bucks. And yeah. while they had it, it wasn't, you know, it was readily available. So I think if you want value and you want to replace allocation, I think you find store picks that you really enjoy. Shut your mouth. You stole my line, damn it. 
Damn it. Hey, I just picked up yeah. All right, the, other, <laughs> the other day I just picked up our store, did their own store pick on it's a 14 year Knob Creek, 60%, 45 bucks. Hell um, yeah. Outstanding. Yeah, yeah Knob Creek has some crazy yeah. stuff because Knob Creek's the only one that's willing to do really, really old store picks. Every Buffalo Trace is doing six out of it right now, too. Buffalo Trace is doing six to eight years, you know. Um, even the Eagle Rare store picks, I've heard like old ones are maybe eleven ish. Um, Russell's picks are definitely not 14 to 15 years. Um, I don't know how Knob Creek can keep up production to do 14, 15 year store picks. Well, I know we they did, can't, uh, it sounds like they canceled them until 2020. Yeah. Our, so, our, our store told us though, when, uh, when they got their samples and they picked that one, they said, you got to move on it quick because the demand has been so high. They're quickly losing that older stock yeah. and it, it's going to start turning into 12 year picks. Pretty quick. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, I will say, like, if you look at it on paper, okay, taste aside, what kind of better value can you get? Like I said, on paper, it's 120 proof, single barrel, honey barrels for 45 bucks at, like I said, a lot of them 14, almost 15 years old right now. That's like, not many. That, that's yep. almost impossible to beat if you look at it, you know, from a paper standpoint. I mean, and they taste great. Yeah, but again, like the Russells and Four Roses stuff are. Yeah, you can get always on I, point. I have a Knob Creek pick here, right here. The Scooby Snacks. It's fourteen years old, one hundred and twenty proof, fifty bucks. Can I mean, you, you can do this, or you can go search for Eagle Rare Seventeen for a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, it's a very, that's a very that's a very good point. I mean, you when you start talking about a fifty dollar you know, bottle of bourbon that will rival all of these other things. I mean, rather than spend a thousand dollars on another, you know, whatever, 20 year, 90 proof Eagle rare. I mean, you, you've just, I mean, you're just buying into the hype of, you know, this special bottle when you've got $50 special bottles, you know, all over the place, you know, maybe not, you know, they're not all on par, but you know, I, I think the point is that these, these, you know, store picks, are are special bottles a lot of the times and if you can get those you know get them they're they're you know fun to try a lot of times they may have a little bit of a different profile but you know they're they're the ones that i think a lot of people really should be focusing on not every special release that gets you know you know done every year the key like some of the guys mentioned already though is that you got to be confident in the person that's doing the pick you got to really trust that store because don't get me wrong i've had plenty of bad picks i've had bad weller antique picks i've had bad eagle rare picks where they're just not even up to the standard product that i would normally like i had a i had a i was in where was i i was in uh new orleans and i had a pick a weller pick that was terrible you would never thought it was weller antique when i tried it it just was not good whiskey and so you know, it's just hey, you're you really you sound, you sound fussy. You have a lot of bad things. <laughs> so fussy. Just drink the whiskey. No, I just I just try a lot of different whiskey. <laughs> hey, real so, quick for those that came in late, someone asked a little bit ago just to have everybody go back through and introduce themselves again so they know who's here. So just start just get a name and channel. Kyle. Bourbon blind. Uh again, like you said, Kyle. So <laughs> junkies. <laughs> Dan and Sean, we're the bourbon junkies. Jason? Uh, I am Jason C. from the Mash and Drum. John? I'm John from Blind Whiskey Reviews. Oh, wait, we already had a Blind Whiskey Reviews, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, shut up, John. We did. The first guy. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. <laughs> hey, don't get it twisted. He was the second guy. <laughs> and Scott? Uh, Scott from uh, My Bourbon Journey. Uh, so, uh, yeah, YouTube collaboration. We're going to try to do this once a month. We will uh, alternate also whose channel it's on, uh, just so everybody can uh, rotate being host as well. Now, tonight, the Bourbon, Dan and Sean from the Bourbon Junkies are alternates. Uh, we asked them to come in. Bobby Childs is usually here, at, uh, also known as Adventures in Whiskey. And on short, short notice, we reached out. Dan and Sean was able to come in and help out. And we'll probably try to do that as well. If we have people that can't make up, make it, uh, we'll try to alternate and, and bring in some different people. Uh, so all of our viewers can meet other reviewers. Hope I, did that sound good? Great. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Good job. Scott. Hey, sounds good to us. We appreciate it. Yeah. 
Hey, where's it going to be next month? Uh, the next episode of Bourbon Roundtable number three is going to be on my channel, The Mash and Drum. Uh, right now we're looking at April uh, 30th uh, for that, uh, for the third episode. So uh, keep an eye out for the information for that, everybody. What date did we say? The 30th? Uh, April 30th, yeah. That'll be on uh, the mash and drum. All right, we got about uh, 10, 11 minutes yet. Let's talk about, you know, we got some more alternatives and we're going to talk about allocated bottles some more. We want to move on to the third topic we were going to talk about. Eh, if we're going to move on, then we got a few minutes left. Let's, let's go to our last topic. All right, we were going to talk about the Barton Distillery and their run of bad luck. <laughs> um, for those that don't know, last year, the Barton Distillery uh, producers of the 1792 series and what do they produce other they produce whiskey. this one right here there oh yeah well yeah Martin. yep the old Martins. <laughs> uh a warehouse collapsed halfway uh and several days later the rest of the warehouse collapsed they lost i think it was eighteen thousand barrels of whiskey mm -hmm. And then just recently, a couple weeks ago, they spilled 120,000 gallons yeah. of mash. 120,000 gallons of mash. Yeah. I think it shut down the whole town. Yeah, it literally was <laughs> flooding into their parking lot. Uh, it was bad. It was real bad. Yeah. Yep. They said uh, they, said they lost um, 10,000 gallons went into their storm drain. <laughs> They had. They said it was a combination of a tank failing, a second one punctured, a third one damaged, a leg snapped and tipped over. I mean, what the hell is going on at Barton, man? I'm Sounds like an conspiracy. explosion. <laughs> I think all of the uh, fish in those local areas are going to appreciate all that cereal that's been dumped all over the place. <laughs> they might have appreciated the cereal, but actually Barton got fined a ton of money when yeah. the warehouse collapsed because they dumped so much whiskey into yep. the river that they they got federal regulators all over them and fine yeah them. it was like twenty five thousand dollars a day that they were being faced up to i yep. don't know what that final number was but it was uh, a decent amount of change for the old sazerac that's that was after the warehouse just collapsed <laughs> how many warehouses did they have though that eighteen thousand barrels how big of a hit is that to barton Mm. Uh, well, well, I know okay. uh, Sazerac stores a lot of their stuff in there. So, I mean, that could be 1792 stuff, Barton. It could be Buffalo Trace stuff. I mean, it could be um, all kinds of stuff in there. Gotcha. And I actually, I reached out to Mark Gillespie earlier today to see if he had ever heard, because when you look at the, the aerial photos of that, it looks like a lot of those barrels are still intact. Yeah. Which speaks out to the strength of what one of those, you know, whiskey barrels can can the strength of how, how strong they are, what they can hold. But I said, did they, have they ever announced how many they were able to save basically or recover? And uh, Mark Gillespie didn't know. They, they've never announced how many of that 18,000 that they were able to. Um, they will never name the amount that they have because hundred <laughs> percent, you were going to see this bottle right here, the old 1792 bottle with a warehouse collapse sticker on it. Oh, yeah. And you were gonna pay through your teeth for it. Here's the issue. So in, I actually was uh, down in a different part of the state for work the other day. And I stopped in one of the bigger stores, I would say in the state of Michigan. And uh, they have a store pick of 1792 full proof. And on the side, you know, they, you know how everybody's doing stickers. On the side, it says warehouse collapse survivor, which absolutely drove me nuts because it's like, First off, that's a lie. Can't prove it. Well, no, no, no. So 1792 at one point released a statement to somebody that I believe was true that they hadn't bottled any of the whiskey that was in there yet. Yeah. So it was like now you're – it's just a full-blown lie. Yeah, but look at look at these stickers. People people love yeah. stickers. Yeah. Well, maybe they just mean that it was that it survived because it wasn't in the warehouse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Been on that. Yeah, that's can incredible you – Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, can you and I survived Katrina and I survived <laughs> the tsunami. Can you um, can you imagine how actually they're, how they're gonna market it? They're gonna be like this barrel, these specialty barrels from this collapse tumbled a hundred feet all the way down to meet its demise, but it stayed strong and true and imparted this earthy oak flavor into this amazing. <laughs> so Didn't I have, you know this I have, bottle of Weller was the uh, polar vortex survivor series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I do have two parts to that. Um, junkies, I do have a, uh, I don't know if it's the same one you talked about. It says, it's sticker says wrecking ball on it. Different um, one. And it was, bit, it's not the same one then. Okay. I was going to say it was bottled on the day that the warehouse collapsed. Oh, okay. Oh. That means um, more that's a little closer at least. That's funny. Right. Yeah. Um, that's really funny. The second part of that though is, so I know everyone's saying the limited edition and stuff, and I can almost guarantee they're going to do it. Um, but if I remember right, when they did like the warehouse uh, tornado survivor and stuff, didn't they sell that for like 70 or 80 bucks on the shelf? Yeah, I think well, it, yeah. it was normal uh, E.H. Taylor price. I mean, I don't think it was anything outrageous when that when that happened. Yeah, I mean, granted, like secondary on it's like two thousand dollars right now. So yeah, I, one just sold the other day for two grand. Yeah, like that. That's one that people lose their mind over. Yeah. It, it, you print dollar bills when you have yeah. one of those. I I had a pour of that, and it didn't taste any different than uh, <laughs> the, than some of the uh, single barrel Colonel Taylors that I've had. That's a it huge literally problem. tasted like a like a slightly off profile small batch. Yeah, oh, that's so bad. Was Jason, Jason? Jason probably had the one that wasn't that didn't have the uh, you know what spun out of it. Then clearly it was a bad one, bad spinner. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's trying to crash the secondary market on um, yeah. Middle Survivor right now, so he can buy it all, and then he'll be like. Look, it's it's better than Pavi twenty eight. You know what I mean, <laughs> and, and that's and that's what I've heard. I mean, I've heard just with that. I mean, in itself, that it for the people who've tried it, I've not tried it, but it, it always seems to get just kind of a very lackluster. You know, like that's nothing special. And and really, I mean, the only thing that makes it special is that you know it wasn't one that you know didn't you know get spun off to Oz or something. You know, so it it is what it is. I heard there's I mean, one fish parts in the in the bottles in the special release. They're gonna put like a one of the fish that died. They're gonna throw like a tail fin in the. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, granted, like the one I had, it was at a bottle share, um, and the guy that brought it, he literally just brings it because he doesn't even like it. So he just wants, you know, he just lets everyone else taste it because it's the, you know, super special crazy one. But everyone's agreed, like it's really nothing special. It's just it's just a bourbon. Yeah. Right. Like if if I had one, I absolutely would not open it. Yeah, I, would, I mean that's for no reason. Yeah, it's that's it's purely hand. just collectible. Right, yeah, right. Like it, yep. if I'm drinking it, it's not for the taste. Like I, yeah. it's or you pay two thousand dollars for that, you're not going to crack it open and thinking this is two thousand dollars good worth you know of bourbon. Is it's any bourbon two thousand? It's a seventy dollar bottle. Is there any bottle you crack open and you think that's a two thousand dollar bourbon? No. Oh, nope. Hell no! It's made of, <laughs> made of fifty one percent corn, which I can get <laughs> in the can. Booker, <laughs> Booker's rye. <laughs> hey, let, let's not forget about the MGP taters, okay? Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Is there any like that the three hundred dollar bourbon? I mean, once you get up at these crazy prices, like, are you are you saying like any? Is there very many whiskeys out there you can say where it's like, oh man, three hundred bucks? Yes. I mean, <laughs> not many, not many. I'll tell you, you know, but if, short I saw another, if I saw another Booker's Rye for 300 bucks, I'd pick that sucker up in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I agree. It's probably one yeah. of the few as far as like an actual like MSRP of 300 bucks. I think most people who've had that would buy that for 300 bucks like all day. But, you know, you know, like Jason had before, I mean, he's got a $50 bottle of, you know, um, uh, Whatever it was you had that was fifty bucks. I forget what it was. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Whatever it was that was fifty bucks. It was a store pick. It was good. It's you Knob know Creek. you don't need to spend that much more. Knob Creek, thank you. All right, guys. Well, we're just uh, we're shy of the hour again, so I think we'll let's wrap it up. And real quick, again, I know we just did it about 10, 15 minutes ago, but go down. Let's uh, give a little bit more detail of your channel, where to find you on Twitter, Instagram, everybody that's there, and we'll uh, close it out. Kyle. <laughs> So Kyle again on uh, with Bourbon Blind, and that's obviously Facebook. Uh, sorry, YouTube is Bourbon Blind. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter are all Bourbon Blind, and our Facebook group is Bourbon Blind Nation. Just plug that real quick. Bourbon Junkies. All right, you can find us on YouTube at um, youtubecom slash junkies, Instagram at Bourbon Junkies, Facebook at Bourbon Junkies. <laughs> Pretty much sums it up. Thanks for having us. We appreciate <laughs> Thank it. Thank you very much. Jason? Uh, yeah, find me on uh, Mastin Drum 
on YouTube, uh, the Mash and Drum on Instagram at Mash and Drum uh, and at Mash and D on uh, on Twitter. Um, if you guys are watching this right now, take a uh, take a look at everyone's channel. If you haven't subscribed yet to anybody uh, that's live tonight, you know, give everyone and subscribe and uh, you know help support the uh, channels. Absolutely, John. Yeah, John again with Blind Whiskey Reviews on YouTube. We're doing a couple blind reviews a week usually. Um, you can also get me on Instagram and Twitter at blind underscore reviews. So I post on Instagram quite a bit. Twitter, not so much, but hey, it's there. And you were the, the second blind channel? Yeah, sure. <laughs> ouch, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> I, th I figured you'd throw that in there that you was the first blind. I can't channel. do it every time. I don't want to make Kyle cry. <laughs> I, I, I only cry on the inside, so no one will see it. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, yeah. So you can uh, you can find me on uh, YouTube, which is uh, my channel, uh, My Bourbon Journey. Uh, same thing on uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, basically. And um, yeah, I try to post uh, a couple of uh, videos, reviews uh, a week, generally Wednesdays and now Saturdays. Um, uh, yeah. So if you're kind of watching this thing, or next Tuesday, I'll actually have. Uh, Lou Bryson, the uh, author of uh, Tasting Whiskey on my channel. Um, so hopefully you'll check that out. But yeah, like Jason said, uh, yeah, give everybody a follow. Um, you know, we all do this because it's, uh, you know, a passion of ours. We have a good time. So it's a uh, great community. Oh, I do it for the $20 a month YouTube page. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're not all rich like John, so... All right. Well, yeah, I, do, I do want to say cheers, everyone. Yep. Yeah. Cheers. Uh -huh. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. I know we hit, uh, we were right around 140 people at least several times. So, uh, okay. uh, good conversation. Thanks to the bourbon junkies for joining us tonight. Everybody check them out. If you haven't. Thank you Thank for you. real. I appreciate it. Send. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Drink blind.